Greetings, and welcome to LGR Oddware, where we're taking a look at hardware and software that is odd, forgotten, and obsolete. And today, I would like to talk about the Sega Saturn. Ha! You had your fooled for a second there, didn't I? Probably not, actually, if you know anything about this, but, uh, yeah, we're talking about the Sega Saturn. Sort of. Not really. We're actually mostly talking about this, the Diamond Multimedia Edge 3D, specifically the 3240XL model, if you care. And uh, this is not only the first 3D accelerator containing uh, an NVIDIA chip, but it is also a amalgamation of hardware goodies for Windows 95 PCs that allowed you to play conversions of Sega Saturn games on your PC in the same way the Sega Saturn games let you play them. So not only with these controllers, which are actual Sega Saturn controllers that you could plug into your PC through actual Sega Saturn ports, but uh, it also lets you play the games rendered in the same way as a Saturn through quads instead of traditional triangles. So let's take a look at this thing. So the first card in this series of cards was released in 1995, November of 1995, for $249 for the one megabyte base model. Now, this is a two megabyte version and there were uh, expansions available to make it four megabytes and some other things like that. So it got pretty expensive pretty quickly. And it was actually about twice the price of a lot of other competing 3D cards uh, compared to things like something like the S3 cards or the ones by Matrox or ATI or Rendition. This was pretty expensive. And why? Well, it actually went for more of an all-in-one approach, including the video card itself, the Sega Saturn ports that you could plug into the back, and also a built-in sound card. And the sound card was, you know, a, a real sound card. You know, it had general MIDI, uh, 32 channels, 16-bit, 48 kilohertz PCM sound, uh, wavetable stuff, and all of the junk that you would expect for a sound card in 1995. The actual video capabilities weren't too bad either, at least for the time period. So you had the NVIDIA NV1 chipset on this uh, Diamond card, at least. There was also a version that included DRAM instead of VRAM, and that chipset was made by SGS Thompson. It was the SDG2000. Either one of them had 1 to 4 megabytes and included a 75 megahertz memory clock. So it could do all sorts of wonderful 3D stuff, but the thing is it just didn't do it in the same way as every other card on the market out there. In fact, it is very similar to the Sega Saturn in the fact that it uses quadratic texture mapping. Now what the heck is that? Well, if you know anything about the Saturn and the way it renders stuff, then you might have an idea. This does the same thing. Basically, this uses quads, or squares, instead of triangles to speed up rendering by reducing the CPU workload. At least in theory, this results in fewer polygons and renders better rounded objects. So, you could actually make things with squares instead of just a bunch of triangles everywhere. And at the time, with uh, a lot lower speeds of CPUs and memory clocks and all that stuff, it made sense to use squares instead of triangles, at least in some situations, to get better rounded uh, objects or models in your game because triangles you had more processing power required. Now, as memory got better and better, this made little sense. And it also kind of made little sense at the time because this meant that there was no support for OpenGL. They didn't even want to include it. I read a statement by NVIDIA and SGS Thompson saying that they didn't think consumers would need OpenGL at all, so they just didn't bother with it. And then by the time Direct3D came along and DirectX, uh, this couldn't do that either because it didn't support rendering through quads, only through traditional triangles and those types of polygons. They did release a driver or a patch for it to update it to run DirectX, but only through software. So you're effectively running a hardware accelerator in software mode to run hardware accelerated DirectX, Direct3D stuff. It made no sense. And it was one of the many reasons this thing went down. And there were some other reasons it just never caught on. One was the price. You know, you have all of these integrated components in there making it more expensive. And a lot of people already had a bunch of expensive components in their computers that this meant to replace. 
Maybe this would make more sense if your computer just didn't have, you know, a sound card or game ports or a decent video card. But if you had this stuff, especially for DOS, then this thing made very little sense because if you had, say, a card by Roland for sound and maybe even a card by S3 or with an S3 chip for video, or, uh, you know, Sing Labs or anything like that, especially for DOS, and DOS is a big deal at the time, then this just didn't match up. I mean, if you compare, say, the sound quality of the general MIDI output of this thing versus something like a nicer Roland card, it's no comparison. Inside the box, you get some lovely documentation here, starting with the user's guide. It's a guide for users, as you might expect. Well, users of the Diamond Edge 3D, uh, not other types of users, whatever I'm talking about. Yeah, Diamond did not deal in those people. But yeah, this is just to basically describe how to install the card and set it up and some other things as far as drivers and whatnot. It's pretty standard as far as uh, like how you'd install another video card. The only thing that's really different is installing the little uh, edge board connectors to the edge board to actually plug in the Sega Saturn controllers. Otherwise, it's pretty basic stuff, but we will get to showing that here in a moment. And of course, it also came with the CD portfolio. Pretty self-explanatory, it is a folio port for CDs. And it also comes with a couple basic instruction manuals for some of the games, although calling them instruction manuals, a bit of a misnomer. It's this like most basic installation tips in both Japanese and English, and that's it. No actual uh, manuals here. So yeah, just, just for installation. So otherwise, all you get are the games themselves. And this is really where all the good stuff is. So we've got NASCAR Racing, by Papyrus. This is a version specifically for the Diamond Edge 3D and compatible cards. A version of Panzer Dragoon, not for resale. And Virtua Fighter Remix, also a special edition for this. And you also have the Diamond Edge Drivers version 1.0 here. Although, like I mentioned earlier, there were other driver versions available later. We're probably just going to be looking at 1.0 here since. Well, that's what I have, and we'll just be taking a look at it in its original form. Because why not? Now let's get to the actual hardware. And uh, there is a bit more going on here than your typical video card of the time, or even of now. Um, not so atypical, though, is the card itself. This is just your standard, like, PCI card. Uh, not anything too weird going on here, except that it is not just a video card. As mentioned earlier, it is also a sound card. So we have sound card inputs and outputs on the back here, in addition to the normal VGA output. And there's also this little deal here, which may look like an Ethernet jack, and in fact, I think it is the same basic deal, but it is actually for the game port to allow you to plug in normal 15-pin PC joysticks. You have a little dongle sticking out the back of your computer in addition to plugging in the end of your joystick. So not exactly the uh, most appealing thing ever, but I guess it beats making like twice as tall or uh, yeah, I don't know. They just kind of had to do it because of the sound card ports, obviously. Now, the other thing that is really kind of interesting with this is the fact that you can plug in Sega Saturn compatible controllers. And so you have this little breakout box here, this edge board, as it's called, just put it in anywhere in your computer. And then you have uh, two little ribbon cables here for port A and port B. So it looks like this here is port A. No, this is port B, frick. Better get it right, I suppose. And so the little red uh, part of it connects to pin one there. Yeah, let's, let's see if I can actually... There we go. And then we have uh, port A, 
which goes right here. So yeah, in the back of your computer, you basically got uh, these two slots in the back taken up. And I'll show this installed in the computer here in a moment. And of course, it also comes with two Sega Saturn pads here, which curiously, they look a lot like, uh, I mean, just the original Japanese Mark I Sega Saturn pads. In fact, they have the same model number on the back, HSS0101. I'm assuming these are the original pads that came with. Uh, obviously, I didn't buy this thing new, though, so I'm just kind of trusting that uh, the person actually put the original pads back inside the box when they sold it. And yes, it is fully compatible with your other Sega Saturn controllers that you may have. So uh, we've got this deal here that came with Nights Into Dreams. And yeah, you can just plug them in right here. And there you go. You got Sega Saturn pads on your PC way before the day of US, uh, USB pads. And without having to worry about any sort of cumbersome conversions from Sega Saturn over to 15-pin joysticks. It's just right there. That's really friggin' cool, I gotta say. Well, that's enough of the close-ups and technical nitty-gritty. Let's go ahead and plug this thing into my older Packard Bell or some other computer that's pretty weak otherwise and see how this does. And we'll do some comparisons between normal software rendering and the 3D acceleration provided by the Diamond Edge. Well, first up, what you get is some software, and it's not really any kind of 3D configuration software, but you do have this media rack and some things to mess with the audio capabilities of the card. Not much to look at nowadays, but back in the mid-90s, this was expected and completely awesome. But yeah, the first game here we're going to try is Virtua Fighter. And this right here is just using the software rendering mode of the game. As you can see, it looks pretty much like a game running in software mode. The resolution's not terribly high, it's running a bit slow, it's a little bit choppy. The textures really aren't that great, the models are a little bit crappy looking. And yes, I have cranked the settings up a bit. It could go higher resolution, but then it becomes completely slideshow territory. And that's just par for the course, especially when you were running it on a system like this, which is with 32 megs of RAM and 133 megahertz. Playing the game with the Diamond Edge 3D, 3D acceleration mode though, is amazing in comparison. Check out that smooth roundedness of those quads. The nicer floor texture, the fluid movement, just everything. Better shadows, better animation. It is kind of like night and day, really. And if you're having trouble noticing, well, let's do a direct side-by-side -side comparison here. And you can see that running it in the 3D accelerated mode is just absolutely awesome. And this was the big appeal of these 3D accelerators back in the day, especially with the limitations of the CPU and other things like that for software rendering. Using a 3D accelerator, especially one like this, really did give it quite a fantastic look. And it's also an improvement over the Sega Saturn version. I mean, it looks very close to the arcade, if not even a little better if you ask me. Moving right along to Panzer Dragoon. And here it is running in the software renderer once again. The game's actually pretty smooth on this system. It's definitely not terrible by any means as far as the frame rate and all of that for software rendering. And you've got a bunch of nice, cool-looking textures underneath that resolution somewhere. <laughs> it's obviously not ideal and could be a heck of a lot better. And indeed, it is. Moving on to the Diamond Edge 3D mode, and not only do we have better resolution, better frame rate, but I think also smoother animation, better looking character models, maybe by a little bit, and uh, more stuff going on too. In fact, if you had the Diamond Edge with more than one megabyte of RAM, you could enable uh, extra sound effects and some other things that really just make the game even more eye-popping and ear-popping, I guess. I guess that's what you call better sound effects, I don't know. But yeah, looking at them directly side by side, eh, it's just awesome. Totally playable in the software renderer, of course. I would still have loved to have played this game on the PC back in the day with the software renderer, but if I had a choice, I mean, obviously, you're going to be going with the 3D Accelerator. It's just sharper, smoother, has more sound effects, all sorts of awesomeness that you just want if you're going to be playing a game like this. Because this game is awesome and it deserves the very friggin' best. 
And lastly, we're going to take a look here at NASCAR Racing, and this is the software renderer mode. And yes, I am driving backwards because I like doing that so I can wreck into everybody, and it's just a lot of fun to me. And this is how I am familiar with playing this game. To me, this looks completely normal. You know, the resolution, the textures, the frame rate, really. And while you could make it run a little smoother, you had to really crank down the graphics in order to be able to achieve a steady higher frame rate. Especially when there's a lot of stuff going on, and yeah, there's always a lot of stuff going on in this game, especially when you're crashing. But man, the Diamond Edge 3D mode, <laughs> this is awesome. Higher resolution interiors and gauges, the menus look better, the environments look better. Everything is, it's just really impressive. I've never seen this game look so clear and smooth. And just, it doesn't slow down like crazy when there's a bunch of crap flying all over the place when you're wrecking like a moron. And the replay modes are actually friggin' watchable. It's just awesome and this is on the same machine you know this is the same specs all we did was swap out the video card don't have to mess with cpu ram anything else it's just awesome and this is why i was so into 3d accelerators back in the day because it took a game that you were very much familiar with intimately and made it feel like an entirely new experience i just i love this stuff and you know i still get a huge kick out of it if you can't tell and that's all for this episode of Oddware. Uh, I do think that this card is incredibly interesting, and it's also very highly collectible. Uh, you know, it's collectible to console gamers and uh, Sega collectors and stuff because, well, it plays classic Sega Saturn games on a PC with a specific renderer that allows them to look just like the Saturn counterparts and better, too. Uh, it's also very collectible to PC people because this is just a weird piece of history. I mean, it's the very first card to use an NVIDIA chipset. It's also very uh, expensive for the time. Well, not very, very expensive, but expensive enough for it to be prohibitive. And as such, not many people bought it. And it's very rare. It's very hard to find these things. And uh, you'll see them go for absolutely hundreds and hundreds of dollars, sometimes without anything and just the card itself. I would not have been able to do this video at all if it were not for David. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for loaning me this card to take a look at in this episode because I've been looking for one of these for many, many years and was never able to find one. Definitely go ahead and check out his Twitch page. He streams under the name The Vine Method as well as on Facebook. So facebook.com slash The Vine Method. And if you enjoyed this video, then you probably will enjoy a lot of my others. I've done several other Oddware videos, and many more are to come, as well as tons of stuff on retro games and old PC stuff in general. So definitely check out my channel for those, or just subscribe to be notified whenever there are more. You can also check me out on Twitter and Facebook, as well as support the show on Patreon, which helps things like this exist, and also gives you some perks like signed floppy disks and doing Q&A sessions videos and whatever else I happen to come up with. And as always, thank you very much for watching.